I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we're in... Latvia, country 77. We're two boys from Sweden who dropped out of college to visit every country on the planet. Our philosophy is to learn by living, and our first goal is to hit 100 countries by our 25th birthdays. Come with us as we explore the world one country at a time. Made it to the airport. Already heading to country 77. I can't believe it. It's gone so fast, but Ireland has been great crap. Previously on Oscar and Dan. I estimate we have about five minutes. <laughs> this hike is really above expectations. Jam donut expert. Gonna hit two new countries in three or four days. As always, our bag is overweight, so now comes the fun time. The 20 kilogram limit on Ryanair is never enough. But we do share one suitcase, so yeah. at least there's that. <laughs> and we don't like backpacks, so we always have this type of suitcase. Experienced travelers only use backpacks. Hello. Why does everything have to be one way only? This is how we like it. You like schlepping things around. The two countries we're going to now, we've literally been procrastinating for the longest time. Travel restrictions and whatever else have always gotten in the way, and uh, now... We're finally going from Ireland. Never thought we'd fly this route, actually. Nervous moment. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> Scan a boarding pass. Okay, it worked. Great. Heavy. <laughs> I love, love, love these types of automatic things where they just stick to each other. It's so satisfying. I don't know what technology this is, what magic, but... Bye. <laughs> oh, we're gonna miss. Irish people, they're so nice. Having our Marks and Spencer's lunch slash dinner, someone else left their trash. Just as I thought, trash. We got a minor heart attack there for a second because before we left from Ireland, everywhere we checked, it said, doesn't matter where in the world you've been vaccinated, you can still enter Latvia as long as you're coming from the EU and you have been vaccinated anywhere. But then once we landed, it started seeming like you had to have been vaccinated in the EU and we got our vaccination in the US. So thank God. But yeah, traveling in the COVID era is not always crystal clear. You uh, find out new things along the road pretty much all the time. Now both of us get through. My immigration officer was very skeptical of the US vaccination card. I was like, I promise, this is, they look this basic. <laughs> showed her pictures from when I was getting it. That's the type of- Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, mine was a lot more chill. This is it. I'm gonna like this temperature actually. It's a bit more chill, but- <laughs> Made it to country 77, 76. <laughs> Loving the name of our street. In Swedish, this kind of sounds like boring wimp, kind of. <laughs> so uh, I guess we're boring wimps tonight. Good morning from Riga, guys. Here's a travel hack, which is probably so stupid, but something you learn when you travel and you do laundry in different places is that when stuff doesn't dry and you need it urgently, there are tricks, especially with socks. This is a clean sock, don't worry. But they're not dry yet, so. She's drying, honey. It's time to head out into Rico. Even though we left Ireland, we're still eating stuff from the Happy Pear. We have like their vegan bounty bar, which is amazing. All right, change of plans. <laughs> we noticed within like one second of walking outside that, okay, everyone else is wearing jackets. Thick jackets, it's 18 degrees. In Scandinavia, this is what people wear when it's 18 degrees. Yeah, we're gonna go change. I mean, it is a bit cold, so. It's not just the social pressure that's making us go change, but yeah. It's that type of temperature where you could wear hot clothes and you could also wear cold clothes. But if everyone else is dressing a certain way, we don't wanna be like, Hello, hello, we are from Sweden, which is not a Swedish accent. Play this paper, but they're not believing.
That's quite the change. <laughs> bye bye laundry, please don't fall down. Look what we found over there. I think it's bubble tea, but we need to investigate after breakfast. If you've been following us for a while, you probably know that one of our favorite ways of exploring a city is just finding a restaurant and then walking there and discovering things along the way. So that's what we're doing now. We found a restaurant for breakfast or I guess lunch at this point. And uh, we're just walking there through the city. Wow, scary reality check when the leaves are starting to turn brown. I'm nervous it's time to leave Europe. So we realized that the last time we were in the Baltics was two years ago. We were in Estonia. And it's so crazy because it doesn't feel like that long ago at all. When we were there, we're like, oh, we'll be in Lithuania and Latvia in no time. And now it's two years later and we're finally here. We're also supposed to go here in the end of July, actually, but the weather was supposed to be bad. And I'm really glad we changed it because now, beginning of September, we have perfect weather. I think we're really lucky though. Like, we shouldn't. Yeah, totally <laughs> yeah. lucky. We shouldn't assume that it's always like this, no. but yeah. Are we in Stockholm or what? <laughs> I think like, so. This street looks just like it. We've even seen so many like Swedish companies and like banks and stuff and it feels a little weird almost. One thing that's not like Stockholm though is these prices. So cheap! But what do you say about a hot chocolate? Ooh, I say do what your heart desires. My heart always desires sweets, so that would be a very bad idea. <laughs> I'm trying to help everyone with the travel, COVID stuff. My brother and my dad do this, do this. Have you remembered this? It's like a huge checklist nowadays. Starter is in bruschetta with avocado, and this one is pesto rosso. Guys, look, look at, at this. Look at the presentation. Wow. Yes. A plus. A plus. A plus. <laughs> A plus. I'm gonna try to get a haircut. I need your head. No. So random rant. I mean, it's really nothing to be annoyed about. It's just a cultural thing. In most of Europe, all hairdressers require you to make appointments, at least all the good ones. So you can't just walk in and be like, hey, can I get a haircut? Well, in much of the rest of the world, you can go to really great barbers without any appointment at all. You just drop in whenever you feel like it. It's been literally a month and a half of me looking for haircuts spontaneously as we travel. And I don't have the foresight to schedule an appointment because I want to see the place, see if I like the look of it. churches and religious buildings in general, but I must say that Orthodox Christian churches are the prettiest and most like decked out Christian religious buildings that there are, I guess. Okay, time number two at a haircut. This time I managed to book a last minute appointment, so let's save this hair. All right, haircut done. I have to say, I think this is one of the best travel haircuts I've ever had. And I've had dozens at this point. So that's high praise for Valters. V-A-L-T-E-T-E-R-S. B, whatever his surname was here at the Barber Hub. We spoke the whole time. I learned about Latvia, about what young people are doing here. It's like a great way to get to know a place also when they speak English, of course. Bubble tea review. I mean, I am a bubble tea connoisseur and I already can tell this is not great. Oh, it's bad. No. Oh. We're going to New York soon. <laughs> okay. One more thing we learned, this is very interesting, is that most people here have to know Russian to get a job because there are so many Russian speaking people who don't even speak Latvian, let alone English here. Oscar, what's this about? The freedom which is where pretty much all sort of manifestations and big city events kind of start from or take place even today. My barber told me there's going to be a big anti-vax protest, so I guess that will start here too. Probably. Freedom! <laughs> We're now 
are entering Old Town or Vekriga. First impressions are what? Amazing. Stunning. So, so cute. So beautiful. So funny we were walking around like looking at all these sites i was like this kind of feels familiar so i checked the address and i was like oh we're half a block from our airbnb that's literally good right there. <laughs> so we're gonna go and take in the laundry and we'll go back out wow we have a great location open oh, i love tote bags hello that's my merch <laughs> <laughs> i love these tote bags more than anything available on mouseofdan.com not anymore <laughs> wow, I realized we didn't even show you our Airbnb yesterday and now it looks like chaos. Complete chaos. <laughs> the laundry. After one night with Oscar and Dan. Never accept us as Airbnb guests. Oscar oh. is actually kidding. With 80 reviews and over 100 stays just on my account, I still have a 5.0 rating in every category. So. Yeah, we always make sure that it's spotless by the time we leave. But during the stay, yeah. it's a different story. We're back out. That's what's so nice about staying centrally, we were saying, because you can just like spontaneously drop by and take a rest, which makes being in a city so much easier. And now we're only two minutes away from like the main tourist site in all of Riga, pretty much. So. Awesome. The sun came out for one millisecond, so we gotta show you the pretty building. Two minutes from our Airbnb, it's actually stunning. Yeah. So the building right here was built by the Brotherhood of the Blackheads. Don't ask me about the name, I've been trying to find like why it's called that everywhere. Can't seem to find anything, but that's the name. They were part of the Hanseatic League back in the like 1400s, way back when. They were very active here in Latvia and in Estonia. And this was originally built in the 1300s, then it was bombed during World War II. And now what we're seeing here it was built in the 90s when it was reconstructed after independence from the Soviet Union. It's very, very nice, though. really pretty. How did I end up with both bags? Typical. <laughs> What's this, Oscar? This is the narrow street in Old Town. Apparently, you should be able to walk like this, touching both sides of the building. But... You might need long arms. <laughs> That's really trying to grow. And here we have finally arrived at the Swedish Gate. This is like one of the only remnants from the old city wall that went around the city. I don't really know why it's called the Swedish Gate but I'm not complaining. Isn't it crazy how sometimes when you see someone on the street, you never know what pain they're going through. Like right now when I desperately need to pee, but no one else can see. Okay guys, the crisis may be ending. I see a public bathroom in front of me. Now we hope for the best. Irrationality really kicks in when you really have to pee. Now we've been walking around for a lot longer and it would have just taken us to go to the restaurant where they have a toilet. But Dan was like, no, we have to go to one of the public toilets out here because I can't hold it in for 12 minutes. Okay, well, newsflash, we've been walking around for 20 minutes now. But I'm not gonna tell you. Do you feel rejuvenated, feel rebirthed? Person, crisis averted. Thank you, Riga, for having free public bathrooms because we have no coins. And that would have been another catastrophe because in Sweden, every single bathroom is okay. It's evil, exploiting desperate people. <laughs> Oh my god, Dan, I found the perfect restaurant for you. I'd never go there. Are you kidding? <laughs> Dinner time. Dinner time. Oscar's preparing for our next country. <laughs> the travel form for Lithuania, but oh, this is a crunchy tofu burger. And my peanut ramen. This also looks good. And a European version. Latvian tofu. <laughs> Look at this. So this is chocolate banana. This is some raspberry thing. Give us a review. Okay, first of all, great raspberry flavor. Secondly, this bottom thing tastes a bit like marzipan. I wonder if it's almonds or something. It's really good. Mr. Sweet Tooth. That's him. Right there, I see him. Now we're here on Alberta Iela, or 
Albert Street, which is famous for its Art Nouveau buildings, which doesn't really tell us much because we're not really into architecture, but we figured we'd uh, come see it. Having like animals and different things on buildings, it looks cool, but it kind of creeps me out. Like if I lived there and I had to stare at those faces all night going, I would be like, okay, let's move. Okay, we have a mint green building and brown window frames. So this is the mint chocolate chip of buildings. The manifestation of your favorite ice cream flavor. Mine. <laughs> Look, Stockholm School of Economics in Riga. Riga, yes, I, oh, I thought that was gonna be Swedish and then I realized it was Latvian. Oops. All right, guys, so after a nice dinner and a nice walk through a nice neighborhood, we're ending the day with a waterfront walk. The iconic Swedbank building and Riga Castle. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I don't know about you, but like to me, this is probably the coolest site in all of Riga that we've seen today. This is the alleged site of the first decorated Christmas tree in the world. Pretty cool. I wonder if it was this small. Next time on Oscar and Dan. Hey, let's go. You go to Vilnius when this bus's entertainment system is better than most airlines. May I call you Jiggly? Only fair distributions of labor in this partnership.